I have scoured the internet to find every possible way to sculpt eyes in Blender to finally figure out which one is the best. One way you can start is by sculpting out the eye holes first. And then once we have basically sculpted the skull part, we can then add the eyeballs themselves. Of course, then you can also add the eyebrows here just to make sure that we have everything that we need to go into the next layer, which is then the muscle layer. The muscle layer here would be, of course, the eyelids filling this hole again until we have covered the entire eyeball. What we can do then is just use the crease brush, for example, to create the opening of the eye right here, starting from one side to the other, creating this sort of almond shape. Look at him looking very tired. <laughs> <laughs> so then the last thing that is missing, of course, to fill the rest of the eye hole is basically the fat layer, the last layer, which basically means just adding more volume around the eye lids. This technique is very, very useful, especially if you're new to sculpting and you are not 100% sure about the anatomy. This way you can basically make sure that every part of the anatomy looks correct without having to do them all at once. But that might not be the best technique for you. Maybe one of the following ones is more intuitive. So I would recommend you try each one of these once or twice to find the one that works best for you. Hopefully this way you can find your best one faster than I did. Method number two is quite similar to the first one. With this now in place, we can then go into object mode and add a new UV sphere. We're basically removing one half and then you could, for example, grid fill this again. So this would be the upper eyelid. And then by rotating it, we have the lower eyelid right now. They're as big as the eyeball, which is not good. <laughs> so we need to make them bigger. And then we can basically just rotate the upper eyelid half sphere upwards and the lower eyelid downwards to open the eyes and have a basic eyeball basically with eyelids already in there. One quick tip for this is to push the eyeball a bit higher because the eyeball is kind of offset from the opening of the eye. So it should look a bit more like this. Then we can place the eyeballs in the right position and we have to mirror all of them, of course, to the other side as well. And look at that, we already have basically eyes with eyelids. Now the last thing to do is to refine it a bit and build everything around. And then once everything looks okay, apply the modifiers and then basically just join these two pieces into the head as well, because now we can go and remesh this. The same resolution may be divided by two to merge them into the face so we can merge them even better into the rest of the sculpt. By doing this, you immediately have a good eyelid shape, good eyelid thickness, pretty clean eyelids as well, and a nice rounding for them, which I think are one of the biggest problems, especially for beginners. Method number three, I think is one of the more popular ones, which is basically to once again start with the very brief eye hold. But then what, what's going to happen is to add a slight rounding here again for the actual eyelids. And then we're going to use either the crease brush or the draw brush to basically, well, draw the actual eye opening and then sort of follow it out more. This might be uh, very useful if you do more like sketches and you wanna go uh, you know, a little quicker and just kind of make sure that the overall look looks okay before you go deeper into making everything look perfect. I have never used this method myself. I've seen that Sculpt uses this method. So you know that this method can definitely work well. On my journey, I have found a few more that work better for me and maybe also for you. On my journey, of course, I have also found methods that I would always advise against. And one of them is basically sculpting only in orthographic view. The problem with this, you can't really see the proportions that work well, because this view mode basically removes all perspective and all perspective distortions that might be in the image, which are important because nothing in real life is perfectly flat and has no perspective. So sculpting in that way also is kind of a, uh, you know, <laughs> not the way to go. <laughs> it is useful if you want to trace a reference image behind this sculpt, for example. But one thing you don't have in this view is the three quarter view, which is very, very important, especially for faces, because there are quite a few features that you can only really identify or see in the three quarter view. And of course, if you don't see like a few of these features, then of course, you cannot create good looking faces as well. Just make sure that you do not use this method. Do not only sculpt an orthographic you.
maybe the way of old of sculpting might have been the best way to do so also in Blender. Basically by only carving in and not being able of course to add back the volume that you've carved away. Maybe this is the way to really learn the way of the shapes and understand the shapes in a way deeper way. I'm kind of memeing with this method <laughs> but I just wanted to I guess sort of highlight that sometimes you know old ways of doing something doesn't always mean bad because one thing that I actually took from this method before is how they back in the day sculpted eyes. So if you ever don't want to mess around in object mode and add these external or separate eye balls, you can also just sculpt them in sculpt mode. You can see that in my sculpting challenge video where I sculpted Ganondorf in uh, multiple time frames. And maybe, you know, you want to use this technique of sculpting eyes and irises in your own work as well. My way of working basically came from trying out multiple different ways of sculpting eyes. With the eyeball now in place, I do not add the eyeballs immediately. I add a placeholder. Once the placeholder for the eyeball is in place, I begin by filling the rest of the eyeball with the fad surrounding, of course, the eyeball. This immediately gives it a way more natural look. And with just a few quick brush strokes, you can create some pretty uh, good looking eyes. And now after the fat, I like to draw in basically the eyelids with just the clay strips brush drawing in these two lines or the eyelid at the top and at the bottom. And then we can just use the grab brush to kind of, you know, turn the sketch into something more refined so that now that we have every part of the structure, we can make sure that the shapes and all that are in the right position. And then once that is basically in place, I can remove the eyeball placeholder basically here. Keep, of course, everything else and then just insert the eyeball in the eye hole. You can now decide which method you like the most and get into it and, you know, use it for your next sculpt to hopefully be able to sculpt a better looking um, eyeball. If you enjoyed this video, you're probably also going to enjoy this video right here, which will show you how I created Irelia from scratch, including the eyeballs. So if you want to know a few, a little bit more about that, then make sure to click that video.